do you remember the whole point of doing vectors, right? Introducing this idea of vectors is to think about lengths and also to think about complex numbers detached, as it were, from the origin. Not only just thinking about this is our important point, this is our important point, right? I can take the position vector, which is off of the origin, and I can just move him wherever I like, and that'll be a free vector, but it's still equivalent, okay? So, here's a little subheading you can make. Shifting the point of reference. We're going to have a look at a couple of principles for what happens when you try and think about arguments and moduli that are not just measured from the origin, okay? So, before we get into any of that, I want you to consider this very pedestrian looking statement, okay? The absolute value of 5 minus 2 is the absolute value of 3, okay? Now, this doesn't look like it's saying anything profound. Uh, we're just crunching numbers, like 5 take away 2 is 3, okay? But this is actually saying something different. For instance, remember that the absolute value of something, the modulus of something, just means how far are you from the origin? Or rather, how far is that from the origin, okay? So what this right-hand side of the equation is saying is, what is the distance from 3 to the origin? Okay, that's what the right-hand side is saying. Now, the left-hand side is equal to that because the values are the same. But the left-hand side is saying something quite different, right? It's not saying what's the distance from 3 to 0. There's no 3 or 0 at all in there, right? What is there? 5 and 2. That's the distance that this is talking about, right? The left-hand side is the distance from 5 to 2, okay? Now, this happens to also be the distance from 2 to 5, and the distance from negative 3 to the origin, and so on. But just because things are equal in value does not mean they are saying the same thing. Okay? So, let's consider now, what am I up to? Example 5. Let's consider this guy. <clears throat> we need a diagram. And just for the sake of consistency, let's all do it something like this. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, here's a challenge for you, right? If you've drawn your argand diagram like roughly like what mine looks like, okay? You have no scale or anything like that. And we don't have any numbers on here, but we can still work out where Z minus Z1 is based on where Z and Z1 are, and then we can work out a distance, okay? So let's think about this. A subtraction is the same as adding the negation. Remember that? Okay. So if I want to think about where Z minus Z1 is, I first want to know where minus Z1 is, okay? Think about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if that's where Z1 is, where does minus Z1 go? It's, uh, it's rotated pi radians around the origin. So now I'm over here. <coughs> Roughly speaking, that's where negative z1 is. Okay? Now, I want to think about this is the position vector. Well, let's take the free vector, move it up to here, because adding z and negative z1 is the same as stringing together those vectors. Are you sick of me saying this yet? I'm just going to keep saying it until it gets drummed into your head. I'm going to do z. And then I'm going to string onto that negative z1. Okay, so that means I've gone somewhere over here. Wait, that vector there. That okay, yeah. I'm going in that direction, right? Because I'm adding negative z1. Oh, okay? And negative z1 goes okay. that direction. So the vector has to go into that, that third quadrant. Okay, so that's where I'm going. So this point here is. Z, take away Z1. You okay with that? Let's pop him in another colour. So if that is Z, take away Z1, 
Then the modulus of Z, take away Z1, is the distance from the origin up to that point, right? But that's not the only thing it's equal to, right? We've been looking at these parallelograms over and over again, right? You see there's a parallelogram there in the first quadrant, right? It's equal to, let me color, this Z minus Z1, that modulus, clearly is equal to this. Do you see that? You see my parallelogram, right? So if this is also Z take away Z1, right? I've now got two different definitions, two different geometric definitions for what Z take away Z1 is, right? For starters, my green one, <clears throat> um, this is the distance, I'm now thinking like I was thinking up here, right? It's the distance from Z take away Z1 as a complex number, as a point, to where? To the origin, right? But my blue modulus here, right? <clears throat> It's also the distance from Z to Z1. I have a new point of reference, right? I'm no longer thinking about the origin anymore. That's what thinking about free vectors allows me to do. I can move over here, and I'm not measuring from there anymore. I'm measuring from over here. It's just as much the distance from Z to Z1. Okay? Now mark that, mark that, because really, this is actually saying the same thing. Did you notice? 5 take away 2. There's 5 take away, and 2 is your frame of reference. That's your new starting point, where you're measuring from. 3 also has its point of reference in there. It's just we don't write it. It's minus 0. You see that? So that's why I'm measuring from the origin. It's, it's sort of hidden away in there. We just don't think about it, because you take away 0, the number doesn't change, right? But in the same way, I'm going from Z minus Z1 minus 0 over there. Or I'm changing my point of reference to Z1. Okay? So now I can think about, for instance, hmm, what if I asked for you to tell me the locus of points such that the modulus of Z minus Z1 were 2? What does that mean? That means, remember, Z, like using my notation here, Z's a variable, and Z1's like an actual spot that I've picked with actual coordinates. Z can move. Z can move anywhere so long as the distance from Z to this point is 2. Does that make sense? We did this question just a minute ago, except we did it for the origin. But now I have a new point of reference. Z1 is my new point of reference, right? So, I mean, my diagram has no scale on it, but I could do something like this. You see what I've got? So the distance from Z, like all of these points on my, well, that's a really bad circle. All of the points on the circle, I can put Z here, or here, or here. And the distance from Z to that new point of reference should be two, because it's a circle, because I've got the radius there, okay? So if I give you this, it's really a different kind of a this, but I've shifted where I'm, where I'm starting to measure from. Does that make sense? If I give you this, um, let's do, let's do this, okay, <clears throat> it's a great question actually. So if I gave you this, right, I've got Z take away a complex number, just watch out, right, watch out because what's the complex number that I'm subtracting? In fact, it's not minus 1 minus i, it's actually 1 plus i, right, there is Z1, that's my actual center equals 2. So 1 plus r, you know, somewhere like that. Yeah. That's my actual sentence. So that will be provided to you. Okay? Okay. Now let's think about arguments. That was, um, that was modulus. So would you solve that geometrically or algebraically? Um, okay. The answer is probably both, to be sure that I know what I'm doing. And then as I get more confident, I would do it towards, I would lean towards geometrically because it's faster. I don't have to do as much working. But I'll show you how to do it G um, algebraically. It's not hard. Like, you just have to crunch through some lines. I'll show you. In fact, maybe, let's just do it for this one. Let's just do it for this one. OK. 
Okay. You know how to calculate a modulus, right? You now need to think back in terms of the distance from z minus z1 as a point. z minus z1 is a whole point on its own versus z and z1 being separate points, okay? So therefore, to get what this thing is, I need to know there's an x plus i, y, and then there's this minus 1 plus i that's sort of messed up in there, right? So here's the way I write this. I'd say this is x plus i, y, minus 1, minus i equals 2. What's the real component in here? x minus 1. x minus 1, very good. Let's just highlight that. <coughs> x and negative 1. They're real, right? And while I'm at it, you can see the imaginary parts as well, right? There's an imaginary part. There's an imaginary part. So let's factorise it to make that clear. I've got, um, let's see here, x take away 1 plus <coughs> i. You okay with that? Okay, now hold on a second. Now that I've got this tidied up as a single complex number, to work out the modulus, it's just the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, right? <coughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> That's just the familiar old circle that we've seen so many times before with a center at 1, 1. Of course it's a center at 1, 1 because remember, this point is 1 on the real and 1 on the imaginary. 1, 1. You see where it is? So you can see, you can crunch through the algebra, but it's much better to know where you're going. It's like, oh yeah, I look at this and immediately I think circle because I've got a constant radius. Right, so that's how I know it's a circle. 